Hi, this is Leah from Mommyish. This is a tutorial on how to use the Ultimate Stitching Set for um, Photoshop CS. This has been tested so far in CS4 and up, so it should be working just fine for the rest of you. Um, and I'll do a separate tutorial for Photoshop Elements, so if you are using Elements, make sure to check out that tutorial. The link is below. Now, first off, as you see, I have an element here, Ultimate Stitching. Um, what you're going to want to do before you get started, obviously, is load your styles, the brushes, and the actions. Um, basically, the action is going to have you stop in certain spots to pick what you want. So, the um, first thing I'm going to do with this element is I'm going to increase the canvas size because I need it to have some edging around it. That way, you know, there won't be a brush going around, you know, the outside and not showing up. You know, it wouldn't work very well would it <laughs> so I would just take my element go to canvas size I see here what the inches are I'm just gonna make it 11 by 5 and and now I have some give this is a pretty large and in charge element but I figure for what we're doing it's probably the best way to go now for Photoshop um, CS there are five different actions three of them are tools just to help you create paths quickly. Um, one will turn uh, any rasterized layer into a path. The next will take anything that's a text layer and make a path out of that. And then also a path from a vector, which is really easy. And I'm sure you guys already know how to do that, but you know, just some quick tools. Um, for those of you who just kind of want to play around on your own with, you know, brushing different selections. Uh, now, we also have a stitching action, which is inside by a quarter of an inch. So it'll do a quarter of an inch on the inside of the element. And then the other one is on the edge, so it would follow the edging of the element. It's pretty cut and dry. Um, when you look at your brushes, which you'll see here, there's several. Um, I did two sizes for each brush, um, and then the corresponding hole size or brush is underneath. Uh, if you want to change the sizing of your brush, you need to make sure for the ones that the numbers aren't exactly the same. And this is how it had to work for, um, for many reasons. Trust me, <laughs> it took me a while to get some of these to match up properly. Um, that it's a percentage-based uh, way of doing it. So it's just a little math. Say, okay, I want to increase this stitching size by 10% or I want to decrease it by 10%, then you would decrease that number by 10% and the stitching underneath it, the hole, also by that 10%. Very quick little calculator work. I promise it's not too hard. I'm terrible at math, so if I can do it, I know you can do it too. <laughs> I dropped college algebra like 15 times. Anyway, um... <laughs> Moving on, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the stitching action so you can see how it works. I have my layer rasterized first. I should note that if you're going to use any layer that's been flattened, that will not work. You have to have it as a rasterized layer, something that's edible, and also something that has a little bit of edging. This goes even for a flat square. Let's say it was a journal card. You need to add a border around it. Otherwise, the way Photoshop works, it won't let us... Um, select it properly. So just keep that in mind as well. <laughs> anyway, now after all those disclaimers, I think we're ready to go. So running the action, play, yay. So right now it's telling me to choose the stitching brush I'd like and um, the whole brush to match and I accidentally hit the space bar. So I'm gonna stop <laughs> and go back a little bit there. Um, I just go went back in my history. In case this ever happens to you and you mess up, you can always stop, you know. Um, you can move back in your history just a few steps and go back to the action and you'll usually be able to find um, where, where we were at. So right here, this was a stop, so I'm going to hit play there and now it'll prompt me again. So I'm going to stop and do it the right way this time. Uh, I'm going to choose the arrow brush. I really like the way it looks and I think I'm going to choose the larger one. And then, of course, make the foreground color the color that I'd like the brush to be. I believe I'm going to choose a yellow. I think yellow would be kind of fun. So I'm going to hit play. All right, now it says choose a corresponding whole brush to match. Again, the whole brushes are always going to be the one directly after the brush that you chose. All right, and you'll be able to tell because the number underneath, like the size, is going to be 
close to the same number. So we're going to stop there choosing the correct brush. It does not matter what color it is. All right. And then we'll hit play. All right. Now it says to pick the style I want to use to my stitching layer. There's six different styles and then hit play again. So I'm just going to choose the first, I'm going to choose the second one. Ta-da! And then I'll hit play. Ta-da! Okay. I know I say ta-da a lot. I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. I feel like I should be like a magician's assistant, except I'm not nearly that thin or sexy and just be like, voila, look at this awesomeness. Anyway, um, <laughs> it says now you can add a shadow or not to the stitching layer and then you can turn off the whole layer if you don't like the way that looks or whatever. So um, we're just going to continue, stop. Here you'll see you have what's called the base layer is actually the stitching. We have the whole layer and then your element that we started off with. So there's two drop shadow styles for the stitching. They're both, one's a little stronger, the other one's a little more subtle. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. Um, there it is. And if I chose a little bit more subtle one, there that is. So as you can see, I think it looks pretty, pretty awesome. Now, I'm gonna show you a few more tricks. I, I think you'll appreciate this. And it's something I recently learned myself. <laughs> so um, please don't think I know everything about Photoshop. This is a, a very self-taught sort of thing over the years and every day I'm learning something new. Now, um, I've noticed with these brushes, if I'm just using the stitching brush, I can freehand easily, you know, that doesn't matter. But if I'm wanting to add the holes to that, um, it's hard because it's hard to get that to match up to the exact same thing that I, I just did. So what we're going to do, I'm going to turn off these layers so they're not bothering us anymore. I'm going to fill it in with something that we can see. I'll probably add a style to that just for the heck of it. <laughs> yes, I use styles all the time, ladies. Um, <laughs> and gentlemen, if there's any dudes out there, I'm very sorry. Um, I'm going to go to the tool and I'm going to choose my freeform pen tool. Now what this will do is it automatically creates a path with what you've drawn. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a new layer for my, or two actually for my own sake. It doesn't really matter with the pen tool itself, but I'm getting ready for making the stitching. So two layers and then take out my pen tool and then I'll just make a little swirly thing. Now, um, obviously if you're using a stylus or something, it's going to look a lot neater than that. But what this does again, it creates the path for you. So then what you're going to do is you would just choose um, the the stroke that you want. We're going to choose the zigzag, uh, the larger zigzag. No, we're going to choose a smaller zigzag. I think it'll work better. All right. Then you would go to your paths tab. You, your work path should already be selected since that's what we just made with our freeform pen tool. And then we're going to stroke the path. Okay. And then for the layer underneath it, we'll pick the whole one, go to paths again, stroke path, there it goes. Now I'm going to deselect that so you can see how that worked. I'm going to zoom in. And then I would just add, um, add the stock. Ooh, sorry. Photoshop's been a little, uh, unhappy with me lately. So I'm sorry for that. All right. I add the whole style to the holes, obviously. And then I will add a stitching style to the layer above it. Ta-da. Um, that one lightens it up. This one would make it pretty much stay the same color. I'll rasterize that layer style, add a drop shadow to that, and there we are. A very quick, free-handed, matched up um, stitching element, which probably looks pretty horrific. Um, I'm sure you can do better than me, so have fun. <laughs> But basically, that's it. That's it. That's it's so easy. And the cool thing about this is if you happen to have stitching brushes from other designers, um, you can use those brushes with this action. You choose the brush that you want um, and, and go with it. Have fun. It's also a decent tool if, um, let's say, you wanted to outline an alpha or add a line on the inside of an alpha, you can use the same action. It'll follow that path for you could add a really cool outlined effect. 
have fun with it. Um, play around. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at leah at mommyish.net or contact me through Facebook uh, on the Mommyish fan page. It's awesome if you send a message there. I promise I'll answer you. Have a great day and have fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>